Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. In the last few videos I've been talking about my buckets. To review, these solo cups are really buckets and I've talked about my set of time buckets, bucket one, two, and three, and I've talked about my tax buckets, taxable, tax deferred, and tax free. And I've showed my spreadsheet that I use to look at my asset allocations across all of these buckets. In this video, I'm going to show you one more change I've made to my spreadsheet and how I'm using Roth conversions to rebalance my tax buckets. Stay tuned. Now, I'm going to begin with a different take on my standard word of caution. I'm not here to sell you any course. I'm not here to sell you any book, and I'm not here to sell you any annuities. I am just a regular retiree, early retiree, and I'm here to share entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. So if you appreciate these ideas, please like and subscribe. The more subscriptions I get, the higher this will be in the search results. Now I'm going to show you one more change I made to the spreadsheet to show you tax buckets by time buckets and time buckets by tax buckets. And I'll show you how that leads me into some decisions about Roth conversions and what assets that I want to move from a tax deferred IRA into a tax free Roth IRA. So in past videos, I've showed you how I've taken the data from my Quicken for Mac and pasted it into this simple spreadsheet. I've created it with numbers, but it's using very simple techniques that you could use in Excel or even Google Sheets. So the values are all pasted in here, and that allows me to use them on these two other sheets here for allocations, overall allocations, and that's uh, shown over here. Um, that's across all of my buckets. And then I've divided it into my buckets on this spreadsheet. And if you recall from the past videos, I've showed you asset allocations over time buckets, and I've showed you the asset allocations within the tax buckets. And now in, I'll show you the latest technique that I've used to look at tax buckets by time buckets. And this chart shows me that most of my taxable bucket, taxable accounts, are in um, bucket one with a little bit in bucket two and a little bit in bucket three. And my tax deferred accounts are a little bit in bucket one, about half of it into bucket two and another half or so into bucket three. And all of my bucket three assets are in my tax-free account. I've also shown my time buckets by tax buckets, which is the other flip way of showing this. Bucket one is mostly taxable, a little bit of tax deferred. Bucket two is mostly tax deferred, a little bit of taxable. And my bucket three is a third of it is tax free, a lot of it is tax deferred, and a little bit of it is taxable. So these charts here I've gotten from this calculation down here where I'm using the same sum ifs of the market value of my assets if they are in the tax deferred category and if they are in bucket two. And all of that adds up to these figures here, which I then use to create the charts over here of tax buckets by time buckets and time buckets by tax buckets. Now, how can I use this data? Well, if you look over at the allocations, my biggest variance is domestic bonds. So I'm going to be looking for things that are in my IRA that have domestic bonds and seeing if I can sell those assets and move it over into tax-free assets that are maybe in the REITs or international stocks. 
or even large stock, small stock, but I'll have to do some rebalancing. But that's what I'm going to be looking for. So how do I look at that? I look over here into the assets and I'm looking for domestic bonds. In my case, I highlighted already some assets that are in my IRA in this sample data, by the way. This is a sample data of about a million dollars worth of assets, but IRA, asset mixtures. There are no domestic bond funds in my IRA, but there are some asset mixtures, including these two that are heavily domestic bonds. So these are likely candidates for me to sell some of these and move them into my IRAs, which are in large stock and REIT right now. I have room to add international and small in this category as well. So I'm going ahead and said, I'm going to sell 30,000 from this asset 21, which is a heavily bond uh, asset mixture. And I'm going to buy 15,000 of asset 24 and 25 in the Roth IRAs. So I've gone ahead and made these calculations. If you could see down here in the formula, I've added 15,000 to this one. I've added 15,000 to this one. And I've subtracted 30,000 from this asset. So after I make these changes, if you go over to the three buckets, you can see that my tax-free bucket is now 21% of my overall assets, whereas it was about 18 and a quarter under the and tax buckets, 18 and a quarter or so. So I've been able to move some from tax deferred to tax free to increase this. And if you look at my overall allocations, I'm now, uh, that's, this is uh, before the change and after the change under allocations, I've cut that in about half. So I brought the domestic bond down and now I'm a little overweight on REITs and I'm a little overweight on uh, large cap, but I've moved 30,000 to tax-free Roth and I can balance from there in more logical asset allocation with asset location in mind. Now, does a Roth conversion make sense? Well, there are also a couple of calculators out there that you can go to, and I'm going to put some links in the notes below to a few of them. One is this uh, Roth IRA conversion calculator from Don't Quit Your Day Job website. It is a great website with lots of interesting calculators on that. So check it out in the link below. So in this Roth conversion, let's assume our, our uh, early retiree is 59. The wall withdrawal rate is going to be more than five years because if, if you're not prepared to wait the five years, don't do it. I'm going to say that we're currently in the 12% marginal tax bracket and that Later in life, after the pension and Social Security kick in, you're going to be up in the 22% tax bracket. I'm going to say that the retirement tax, tax uh, investment taxes, you're going to be in that 15% um, capital gains and ordinary uh, qualified dividend uh, tax brackets. I'm going to say we're going to have about 6% return on investments, and I'm thinking about 30000 So should I convert? And this says... With these assumptions, you should convert to a Roth. The IRA option would leave you with 38,000 at age 65, 33,000 in the IRA, and another 48, uh, 40, 49 in what would be the invested taxable uh, uh, savings that you're going to be using to pay taxes. Even factoring that out, the Roth IRA gives you 42,000. It's 11% more than those totals. So a Roth IRA makes sense. Now, Fidelity, Schwab, and Vanguard all have their own Roth conversions. I'm going to show you Fidelities here real quick. So we're going to assume $30,000, and I'm going to say all of this is traditional IRA money that you've uh, made not 
uh, non-tax deductible contributions. That makes the accounting a little bit more difficult on these things. So let's assume it's all pre-tax dollars that you've contributed and gotten the deduction for it. So I'm going to say, again, moderate uh, return that you're going to take the money out of your taxable accounts and you would have invested it if you didn't. And I'm going to say those kind of risk returns, you're, you're in the 12% tax bracket. This adds tax uh, at the state level. I'm going to say 4%. And how many years do you want to wait? What tax bracket do you think you'll be in? And what state tax? I'm going to say we're going to go up to 5% uh, on, on the uh, state tax. And get your results. So... The way to read this chart is a little complicated, so very carefully read it. The estimated taxes due when converting the Roth IRA would be about $4,800 from your taxable account now. And based on the information you provided, the calculations assumptions, we estimate that you'll end up with 5,000 or so more after tax than if you had, if you didn't convert the non-Roth IRA to a Roth IRA. So they're saying, again, it makes sense to convert to a Roth IRA in this case. And you want to make sure that you not only don't go into the next tax bracket, income tax bracket, but that you don't go into the higher capital gains tax. And there's a calculator here. I'll put a link into it uh, in the notes below. But let's say, uh, and again, this is 2020, uh, filing status. They, they don't have one out for 2021 yet. I got this from TurboTax's blog. Um, let's say we're married filing jointly, that we had an investment that we that we paid $10,000 for and we sold it for $20,000. So a very simple explanation. We're going to have $10,000 in long-term capital gains. We've held the asset for more than a year. And say we have $80,000 in taxable income. That's just below that kickoff of the 15% capital gains tax rate. And that shows capital gains of $10,000 with zero taxes due. Now let's just say we had $81,000 in capital gains tax that you'd have to factor in to your overall pos position on whether it makes sense or not. And if you didn't keep it for uh, the, the more than a year, you'd be taxed at ordinary income rates. And so you'd be paying $2,200 on that $10,000 gain. So again, think about your long-term tax implications, long-term capital gains tax implications on where you are on the final income. That's another reason why doing this later in the year so you could be precise about where your income is going to be makes sense. Now I want you to keep in mind some rules that apply to Roth conversions and how I'm approaching them. Be sure to look at your own tax situation and talk to an advisor if you need to. But this is the way I look at the Roth conversions. I am in a low income period of time before pension and social security starts. And so these are the ideal years to think about Roth conversions. I'm going to try to do it within low tax brackets. So take a look at the tax brackets and I'll eliminate most of those tax brackets and I'm going to focus on trying to stay in the 12% tax bracket. That means keeping my income below $81,000. But do you remember the tax brackets for capital gains? Long-term capital gains and qualified dividends have a 0% tax bracket if you keep your income below 80,000. If you keep your income below 80,800 in the 2021 tax year, then those Qualified dividends and long-term capital gains are going to be taxed at 0%. So that's what I'm going to target. So rules to remember on Roth conversions. Number one, unlike contributions, there are no income or age limitations. You can, you can make a Roth conversion 
at any time from your IRA to your Roth IRA. However, you'll want to stay within those tax brackets or it won't make sense. Number two, if you are under the age of 59 and a half, beware of the 10% penalty for withdrawals from an IRA before that age. So therefore, you can convert to a Roth IRA below that age, but you'll need to pay the taxes on that conversion from some other sources. Number three, you'll need to think about the five-year rules with Roth conversions. Tax-free distributions or withdrawals from a Roth IRA require that you have a Roth IRA account for at least five years. Also, each conversion will trigger its own five-year waiting period. As I look at these, you're moving funds from bucket one or bucket two into bucket three. You're not going to need it for at least nine years anyway, right? Also, if you have a Roth 401k, think about setting up a Roth IRA and making sure that you roll over that Roth 401k to a Roth IRA to avoid required minimum distributions. Yes, even though it's tax-free, if you left your money in your Roth 401k, they're going to require you to take it out after the age of 72. So, are you thinking about Roth conversions? What are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if these ideas are of interest to you. Again, I was retired, so I'm focusing on forced early retirement. And if you like these ideas, please subscribe. Thanks.